let's invite the next um, speaker, uh, Francisco Figueredo, to speak on diagnosis and management of neurotrophic keratopathy. Sorry. Well, thanks very much for this invitation. I've been tasked to talk to about diagnosis and management of neurotrophic keratopathy. I have no financial disclosure. The neurotrophic keratopathy is an uncommon degenerative coronary disease characterized by impairment or absence of coronary sensation. Depending on the severity of NK, which can be graded by Marquis classification, the clinical features can range from punctate epithelopathy, persistent epithelial defect, to corneal perforation. Independent of the cause, what led to the neurotrophic keratopathy always has common clinical presentation and requires a specific uh, therapeutic approach. Then this is the Marquis classification that you're probably familiar with that. Then you have three stages, stage one, and then you have this diagram, this photograph at the top. Basically, you have purely just epithelial problems, epithelial thickness, hazy, epithelial keratites, uh, a little bit of stromal scarring, but not necessarily uh, loss of epithelium. The stage two, you have a, a persistent epithelial defect with all roll edges, and then you can see on the photograph that around the the epithelial defect, the epithelium is loose as well, but the stroma is still not affected. Stage three is when you, have st you start to have coronal ulceration, stroma melt, and then can lead to perforation. There are many causes of neurotrophic keratopathy, genetic causes, uh, then ocular causes, and then herpes is the main in a, a cause of a, a neurotrophic keratopathy. Chemical burns, and I'm going to have a special address in chemical burn, and then I'll highlight that later on. Some neurological problems, mainly uh, tumors, you know, like a meningioma, and then systemic disease like diabetes is, is the main cause of systemic. This is just a management pathway from the diagnosis, and I'll highlight, take one it, to, it, through you, and then you have to do some investigations, and then management will be medical and surgical, and there are some recent treatments that I'll sh take you through in a minute. Then in terms of diagnosis, the first thing is to look at symptoms. The symptoms are very much like a patient with dry eye. They have a complaint of dryness, discomfort. It's very unusual for a patient with neurotrophic keratopathy to complain about pain because they have lost their corneal sensation. They certainly complain about photophobia, reduced visual acuity because often the central part of the corn is involved. And then the symptoms seem to be worse in the morning and aggravated by external factors like, you know, in these days, people spend a lot of time in mobile phones, air conditioning, etc. In terms of sleep examination, again, reduced breakup time, punctuated epithelial erosion, reduced bleak rate, may progress to slow heel epithelial defects uh, with a smooth and roll edge, like I showed you on the market classification stage two. In terms of investigation, corner stereometry, then you can have the very simple test that you get a, a, a cotton thread and then touch the corner, very qualitative, but can help you in terms of uh, highlight the patient has or not some coronary cessation problems. You have quantitative, and the most widely used is the Cochet Bonnet direct contact, and the very few people has access to the Beaumont non-contact gas stasiometry. That's more specific, it's more for research, and you can't get any more. In terms of in vivo confocal microscopy, you can have some qualitative assessment, but you also have some quantitative assessment, mainly to look at the nerves, and then it can give you some idea in terms of uh, the stage of nerve damage. And then finally, you may need to get some assessment in terms of neurology or stem assessment then to get the full picture that can highlight what exactly the patient has that led to this neurotrophic keratopathy. In terms of management, uh, you have to more or less grade the patient's stage based on the Marquis classification. Then you, for stage one, uh, the first thing you need to do is the bullet point three, that you review all the topical treatment and try to discontinue most of the treatment because of toxicity that will make the, the corner surface worse but also try to use preservative lubrications, uh, punctual occlusions, and then stage two, we use what you use for stage one, plus uh, prophylactic antibiotic therapy, eyelid closure, that could be atosorophy or botulinum toxin, bench contact lens, serum drops, autologous or allogeneic, we use allogeneic a lot in the UK at the moment, or any other derivative, blood derivative product, and also amniotomy brain transplantation in some cases. In stage three, you know, when you have strong involvement, you do stage one and stage two treatment, but you start to use metal uh, MMP inhibitors to try to reduce the breakdown of the collagen uh, layer. And then you use tissue ad adhesive if necessary, then other membrane transplantation, contact lens. And obviously, if you have perforation, larger perforation, you may need to go into corner transplantation, tectonic or full thickness graft. In terms of more recent treatment, and then I say more recent, but some of this has been available for a while, and then you have this RGTA, 
um, that uh, improve the, the extra life matrix, the position, and there is one product in Europe from TEL Labs called Classical. They done a clinical trial, but they have not published the data yet. And then recombinant human nerve growth factor. And then, as you know, this has been approved in America just recently, and then it's commercially available since January 2019. And then it's called Oxavate by a company needs called Don't Pay, and has promising, extremely good result. And I'll share one of my patients. And final number three is coronarization. Then this was a first paper published in 2009. You can do direct coronarization from one side to the other side. Or you can do indirect, this developed by the group in, in Toronto, in kids where you use the sural nerve from the legs and then just uh, link the two, uh, the contralateral and the eye effect by the condition. This is one of my patients that was involved in the Repari study using nerve growth factor topically, and this is a male patient, 24 years old, had a severe burns to the right and left eye, worse in his right eye. And this was in July, then within a week as part of my protocol, they had, he had a minute membrane transplantation both eyes. And then in September, he was still had an epithelial defect on his right eye in the center, and cessation was zero. And the left eye healed well, and they had a partial limb stem cell failure. He was used lubricates, serum drops, and bench contact lens. In October, I had repeated an amniotic membrane transplantation to his right eye. And then in February, uh, he continued to have problems with his right eye in terms of the defect, and then I enrolled him in this repair study, and then he was allocated to one of the three groups to use 10 micrograms per mil of nerve growth factor to his right eye, and in, two months later, his cornea was completely healed after being seven months with continued epithelial defect. And then his cornea cessation improved a little bit, but the ocular cell became stable. And this is just the patient you see at the top slides, the baseline without and with fluorescent uh, uh, drops. And then four weeks later, see how the improvement was remarkable using this topical medication. It was really impressive. And within two months, the epithelial defect disappeared. It was there for seven months. And his uh, in vivo confocal microscopy showing uh, the right eye had no coronal cor nerves at all, and the left eye had some coronal nerves showing. Explain that these people with chemical burns also have some severe uh, neuro uh, neurotrophic keratopathy. These are the patients that we've been doing coronal rotization. One of my patients, young patient, um, done, he was only 25, and then he had a meningioma. And then the slide A showing the active epithelial defect, and then B, one of the time that he was quiet, and then five years later on C, he had uh, coronal neurotization. And then these are patients had uh, highlight the chemical burn can induce severe uh, coronal rotization. And then on the eye effect, the coronal sensation is very poor. And after autologous ex vivo expansion, liver stem cell transplantation did not improve. And then in conclusion, NK is a chronic, serious, potentially blinding and refractory coronal degenerative disease that often poses significant treatment challenges, especially when complicated with other current ocular comorbidities like exposure, dry eye, and liver stem cell deficiency. New treatments on the horizon, especially the ox oxabate. Thank you very much. Thank you for the great talk.